morning everybody this is Isabel at uh, the wild fire and wax studio for our weekly fire paint with me session so I'm just gonna wait as usual a little bit to see if any of you are gonna join me today and today is really really exciting today we are going to do shellac burn uh, shellac burn is a technique that is maybe what we could call mixed media i.e. it's the application of a varnish called uh, shellac or french polish onto your work so basically if you want to try this at home uh, make sure that you already have uh, a work uh, that has been primed and that you already have a few coats of encaustic paint okay so I'm just waiting a little bit. Okay, today I turned around. Uh, I moved around the studio. It was a major spring cleaning uh, over the week because the weather was so good. Uh, I mean, a few days ago. <laughs> so everything went out and uh, moved my desk around. So basically here you're having uh, behind me uh, my main desk when I have my medium, my pure medium. And ah, somebody is online. And uh, say hi guys if you whenever you're coming in be lovely um, and some of the works that I've been finishing during the week which are really really crazy but I love it I love them I really do I'm really enjoying myself for the moment it's wonderful um, so let's get started now here's my disclaimer for today uh, whatever techniques I am going to show you today uh, because it involves naked flames, because it involves... Uh, Hi Mary, how are you? Because it involves flammable liquid. Uh, I'm just going to show you. It's a demonstration and whatever way you're going to do it, please be safe. And I am not responsible uh, for whatever is going on. Is that okay? Okay, uh, as usual. I am going to demonstrate here for the next 20 minutes or so the technique and then if you want to have the recipes because I'm going to talk to you about making your own shellac and so on and so forth uh, if you want your own recipe and all of this you can subscribe to my Hi Kev, how are you? Lovely to see you and if you um, want to have the recipes literally written up I have still have the PDF made here, two pages of information and recipes and so on and so forth. And I will send this to tonight to my uh, mailing list. So please make sure you are subscribed to my mailing list and you will receive basically the replay of this demonstration and also the free PDF of all the information that you need to know about shellac burn, which is today's uh, demonstration. Okay, first thing, what is shellac? Now, shellac is the secretion of a bug, uh, a bug that you can find in Thailand and Indonesia and so on and so forth. And basically it's processed and you can also buy it uh, in a flake form. Now, if you go to shops like Jackson's in London, they do sell it by 250 gram, 500 gram, a kilo, whatever amount you need. And you will find it in different grades of color. Okay, so the main one that you can find will be the orange one, which gives that golden glow. Uh, now, I only got the liquid form, but this will be the liquid. Okay, you see the color here? Yeah, so the flakes will be this color all the way to what they call blonde, i.e. a very um, much yellowy, paler color of shellac. Um, so whatever color you need, you will need it. If you make your own recipe, obviously, because I'm going to go first for the making your own recipe. And then after, I'm going to tell you how you can buy it and have it already done. But obviously, it's cheaper if you make it yourself. Now, um... In Ireland, now this needs obviously to be dissolved into an alcohol based, okay, which is mostly ethanol. Now, in Ireland, I'm not sure about other countries. I know in France, you can actually buy a liter of ethanol in the shops and it's very, very cheap. Now, in Ireland, you cannot buy it clear, uh, which is a bit of a pain if you want to make your own because they add this uh, purple 
coloring to it so which basically will not suit at all now if you travel in another country or so on and so forth try to bring some back but this is something now i think uh the chemists sell it in Ireland. Now, I don't know. I do bring mine from France, so uh, I cannot help you on this one. But I know there are law laws in Ireland about pure ethanol because people were like, sipping it. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, <laughs> the recipe in order to make your own shellac will be get um, a glass jar or... A container that is not plastic put your flakes uh, into it and add your ethanol or alcohol on the top uh, 250 grams of uh, shellac flakes a liter of alcohol cover it let it steep overnight you can always give it a little shake a little stir in order to like really move them around and then within 24 hours you will then have shellac or when we buy it in the shop it's french polish okay which will be this kind of liquid all right now if you do not want to bother about making your own shellac if you want to go nah i don't even want to go there buying the flakes trying to find the alcohol la 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 la, la. You can go to any DIY shop and my the brand that i use is uh rustin okay now i know it's the other way around but rustin r-u-s-t-i-n-s -S. now it, i write this on the um, on the file now and it's also called french polish now would you believe a little secret about myself there was a time 20 years ago when i used to be a french polisher this is not a joke the french woman french polisher i can see you coming but i used to do it the french polish and it's a real pain because you need to do like 30 layers sunny down but anyway that is another story so this is the pure shellac one i.e it's the color of really dark golden syrup okay this one was seven euro and uh maybe it's 300 mil so it's not cheap but in the same time it goes a very long way unless you work very big so this is the one that you need right now i'm going to talk to you after that about the colored shellac now for this one you will need the clear french polish okay which i have a big tub here same brand rustin and clear french polish now this is 30 euro uh and i think you have uh, a liter is it a liter or often no yes a liter a liter so it's actually better to buy it into these little containers okay now i also wanted to let you know that today i am not going to show you the wet shellac mostly because i don't really want you to try <laughs> oh, everybody goes oh why is she depriving us from it well mostly because it is a mixture of um, natural product secretion resin which is shellac and alcohol so basically when you apply it and basically have your bloater touching it. it's the alcohol basically set fire to the whole thing which is pretty dramatic it gives a beautiful blue flame however it is not my most favorite technique because you have you don't have really have control over the what it does now actually let's show you an example of what shellac burn is just in case now, i don't know now, this is one of my oldest work. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see. Can you see the markings here? All of these filigree, spidery, cobwebby kind of design on this. Yeah? Well, this is basically done with the natural shellac burn. Uh, shellac, sorry. You know the golden one, the first bottle, little bottle that I showed you? This is what it is, okay? So today what I'm going to show you is basically the dry shellac burn, which I much prefer. It's easier to work with and you can really get this beautiful little spidery... Um, oh, somebody... Um, I have missed swimming this morning because of heavy rain showers, so... I can oh sorry I can't see what you say can enjoy your video oh wonderful I'm sorry you're missing swimming hopefully um, 
hopefully you are, um, you'll be able to go swimming after. I oh, wish I could go on swimming now. Come on, Summer! Anyway, so, the usual. Make sure, because obviously you're working an encaustic, plus you're working with alcohol base, so there's a smell to it. Please work in a well-ventilated area. Now, I have the fan here in the studio because I'm here working all day long, all the time and I have the door open so there is a lovely flow, gentle flow, breezy flow of air, okay? Very important. I do not wear gloves, however, I recommend you to wear gloves and if you can, wear a mask also. Now, this is for the, the disclaimer. Safety first, okay? The next thing is that I'm going to show you also how to work with the pigments, okay? So now, when you work with natural pigments, some of them are toxic, okay? Now, for the people that do not know what natural pigments are, natural pigments are basically biologic, basically, uh, based. So they can be done, for example, you know the blue that is used, uh, the ultramarine blue that is used for... Um, the Virgin Mary Veil, okay? You know that beautiful, rich blue? Well, this basically is very expensive pigment, natural pigment, because it comes from lapis lazuli, you know, the gemstone that has been grinded finely, okay? Now, uh, the oldest natural pigment that you can find will be in Lasco, for example, that they use to make basically the, the frescas, you know, the the prints, the hand prints and so on and so forth. Now, I use, being French, I tend to buy them when I go home, I tend to grab a few ones, but you can find them in little boxes like this. Okay, this one is Sennelier, which is a French brand. I also have um, Cornelissen pigments, okay, which you can find in Jackson's, so you can find them in different little containers. And these are basically the base of any paint that you can find. Some oil paint use it for tempera. So basically, I don't know if you can see. Okay, you see that beautiful rich color and you only need a little sprinkle uh, when you add them either to your encaustic paint or when you're doing your shellac, colored shellac, to basically have a color. Now, when you are gonna do your colored shellac, which I'm gonna show you in about five minute time, Make sure, first of all, make sure you go into either the R&F, which is a wonderful, biggest company uh, for encaustic uh, materials. They have a wonderful files, uh, resources on their website. And they have one file uh, which uh, basically tells you which pigments are safe to use and which pigments are more toxic. Because some of them are very volatile. I mean, they all are very volatile. I, you can breathe them. So make sure that you, when you are working with pigments and you're adding them to your shellac or to your encaustic paint, make sure you're wearing a mask. And this is extremely important. So can you please promise me you will do that? Yep. Okay. Now here I've got a little collection of them I've accumulated over the years. This one is Prussian Blue, which is the most divine color. I don't know if you can see. Look how deep and rich this is. This is just incredible. I absolutely adore this one. Um, I've got them. And the Cadnums, the Reds, these are the ones that you have to be very careful with. Okay? So it's, this is the other thing that now you might not want to do the, the colored shellac, but I'm just letting you know. Okay, now what do you need? Okay, first of all, you need to have your board prepared, prime with encaustic gesso, and then I have added here uh, white, just white um, encaustic paint, fused, ready to go. And I did white because it will show better. Okay, so basically this is what you need. First, you need your shellac or French polish. So we're going to use this one first. Okay, 
you need a foam brush or a little brush, soft brush or a bit of tissue, okay, to move it around, all right. What else you need? A uh, blowtorch. Now, if you work small, these little blowtorch are wonderful. A little creme brulee blowtorch. You can get them in any uh, cooking um, suppliers, co kitchen suppliers. Okay, these are really cool. And it's great because they are giving a very small but direct flame. Okay, and then if you work bigger, you can use your benzomatic, go back on the files, uh, we covered that a few weeks ago. Um, and a mask and gloves. All right, now, oh yes, I know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna show you before I tilt the camera, uh, I'm going to show you how to make the colored shellac. Now, this one, the lovely golden glow one, you do not need to add colors to this one. It gives a beautiful uh, effect, as I'm going to show you in about five minutes time. Okay, so this one can stay like this. It already gives its effect. Now, if you want to make the colored one, I mean, people have different ways of doing it. I do them in little jars with a lid. Okay, so this one was a strawberry jam jar. <laughs> okay, and what I did into this, I poured some of my clear French polish or shellac. You don't need to put too much. It depends what you need. Okay, just put a little bit. So here I put about that much, about a hundred mil. Okay, and then with gloves, fresh air. You're wearing a mask, right? All right. You basically sprinkle from the tip of a little spoon or the tip of a brush. You just put a little bit of pigment to this. You do not have to add too much, okay? It's better to start small and then keep on adding as you go along. And you do not need much. So start very small. And the, what you really, really need to do now, some artists basically then take a brush and literally stir it. Stir it really, really, <coughs> really, really hard for about one minute, two minutes, whatever. A, a pretty long time. Because you need to activate it. Because you need the pigment to really go and infuse the shellac, okay? Or the French polish. Now, what I do because I'm lazy, I have one of the lid and I give them a shake. Now, this one has been is ready since last night, so I give them a shake, a good, good shake. So, when I'm talking to you and you're doing something else, just give them a good shake. Now, the only problem with this is very useful, but the only problem is that you do not want the like to go into the lid because then it you won't be able to open the jar. So. But so far it's been working okay. So give it a good shake and activate it, okay? For like two, three minutes, whatever. Do it as long as you can. And then you will end up with this. Now this is the yellow one. What do I have in there? I've got a Prussian blue one. Prussian blue is cool. This is the Prussian blue today. And I've got some red, I've got some white, I've got some earth green here. I've got different colors ready, okay? <laughs> okay. Now my years of French polishers basically uh, are worth it because it's the way you apply the shellac. So now I am going to tilt the camera. Hopefully you will be able to see what's going on. Okay. Now. We're gonna start with this one, all right? So, the way I do it usually, I just put a, I pour a little bit of it, and you do not brush it heavily. What you do with shellac, you just push it around. You literally push it around, and you do not want to have it too heavy either, because that will take a while to dry. So I'm just gonna push it around on my prime board now. It dries faster when your work is still warm. Not wet, but still warm. But here, okay, so whatever shape you want it to be. All right. Whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to do little lines. 
anything you want. All right? And I'm going to show you as well with the colored one. Give it a shake again before you use it. And you brush it on. I don't know if you, oh, if you can see me. Can you see me? Yeah. All right. Some of the green one. So don't apply it too heavy and literally don't brush it but move it on the board and it will be a much better effect all right and close your jar otherwise it will dry okay now because it takes a little bit of time to dry i prepared one earlier so this one is gone Now, am I in? Yeah, sorry, I won't be able to see your question, so you might have to ask. Now, this is dry here. This is still a little bit tacky here. You do not want it to be wet. If it's wet, it will catch fire, and it's not that good, okay? So, if you, you apply your shellac, and then let it... Usually, I leave it my, by my stove for... Um, 15 minutes or so, or if it's warm outside. Okay, so here we go. Now, we're gonna work with a small one here. All right, so flame big enough. And usually what I tend to do, I tend to keep my blowtorch sideways. All right, and then you move it. Now, a lot of people keep on doing this. You don't need to do that. Just go gently like a brush. Just like it. You see what it does? I'm going to remove every flammable. Can you see the lovely filigree? Now this one, the first one that I'm doing right now, is the one with the natural shellac burn. You know the honey colored one? And you don't have to do it everywhere. See the way it's split? That's this basically the alcohol burning. I might just use the biggest blowtorch actually. But you get the idea, yeah? I don't know if I'm still on screen now. Alright, so that will be the first one. Can you see that lovely? Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> Lovely filigree. Yeah? It's pretty cool. Now, I am hoping this is still it's done not wet. Okay. And it's the same for the colored one. Alright? Same idea, but this time you have a colored. So this one is... I, I, I mixed a few colors this morning. I put green, I put blue. Alright? Now, whatever you do, do not touch it straight after it because it's still going to be hot. And the flame, at times, if there is flame, if, it's, if you have done it with a little bit of wet steel, will stay for a long time. So please do not touch it. Just burn it, put it on the side, and don't touch it. But you see the lovely effect? That is shit like burn, baby. I'm going to do the whole thing. So it's done. Now you can use a bigger torch, obviously, but I like the small one because you can really go back to the little areas. And it's not too hot. You work at it gently. The blowtorch is sideways so that it's not hitting it straight. You have control over it. No, that's it. The whole thing is burnt. And you can go over again and add more shellac to it. Okay, now let's go back up. Can you? Can you see it all? Great! 
Okay, so basically, I know, sorry, it wasn't a mega piece of art, but just show you the different things here. The top one will be the honey, normal shellac bird, the pure shellac one, and then the red and the blue one and the green one will be basically the colored shellac. Do you guys have any questions? No? Are you going to try? Okay? Basically, that's it. Now, what you need to do now is literally leave it alone. Do not touch it. Do not touch it just in case. And put it on the side and then you can keep working and do whatever else you need to do after this. All the different techniques that I'm going to show you as we go along. Okay? Love it. This is great. I love it. This is my, my one of my most favorite techniques. I think it's just beautiful. Um, beautiful work. That's it. So basically, uh, can you put wax on? Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can put either a thin layer of, um, of medium, uh, or you can put a transparent color, you know, uh, um, encaustic paint of any description on the top of it. Absolutely. You can, and then you can all, you know, put maybe what is really beautiful uh, is that if you put a very thin layer of encaustic medium on the top so and then put more on the top you will have basically the, the the layer effect so kind of some in the background so you have that beautiful echo and uh you can also um Alice told me makes those beautiful organic shapes she, she's the queen of shellac burn she, her work is incredible you can check her out um and she basically applies, I mean, you know, she doesn't tell anybody how she does it because that's her technique, that's her work. Um, but she can create those beautiful flowers and organic shapes uh, with it. So you can, I mean, here I covered everything to show you how it works, but you can do incredible work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's about it for today guys uh again if you want to subscribe to uh www.isabelgabory.com um and um subscribe to my newsletter i will send you the replay of this demonstration and i will also tell you welcome kate you're welcome and you also receive the pdf um of all the techniques and recipes shown today the light is going on and off it's lovely and sunny outside now Next week, unfortunately, I will not be able to do uh, this session because I have a show. Um, I have an art trail here uh, in East Clare called Arts in Studio and we're having a group show taking place on Friday, starting on Friday, opening on Friday at 7 uh, in Kinvara in County Clare, a beautiful spot by the sea and there's a gorgeous little gallery there and I will be exhibiting my vessels for the first time. It's all exciting. So I will then see you in two weeks uh, where I will cover how to inscribe, i.e. Um, write and inscribe with a thin silex into your um, encaustic medium and do letters and words and any marks. And it's a pretty cool technique. It's gorgeous. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Well, the work is ready now, so it's just a matter of finding out how to um, show them. So I am I'm literally on my way to make those glass uh, case. Um, this way they will be put behind glass. I uh, don't want them to go flying around the room. So thank you so much. Yeah, it'd be good, it'd be good. We're a good bunch of artists and you know, some of us are incredible and it's beautiful. Thanks, Mary. Thank you very much. Thanks. I love them too. Okay. Listen, guys, you have a best weekend. First of May and so on. Flowers everywhere. I hope you're going to enjoy your weekend. I certainly will. And I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.